In this video I'm going to show you how to create step and cover flashings. These are used where a pitched roof abuts a wall or chimney and are normally used on profiled roof tiles or sometimes on a conservatory like this. Step cover flashings take elements from the standard step flashing and the apron flashing otherwise known as cover flashing and combine both of these together to provide both the step and the cover and these are very useful for any roof or roof covering that is not a flat profile this allows the flashing to deposit any water into the lowest part of the roof like this roof tile and make the roof 100 percent waterproof however the step cover flashing should not be used with either slates or small plain tiles like these and i have dedicated videos available via the link at the end of the video or in the description bar if you need them. Step and cover flashing should also not be used with large flat tiles like these without additional waterproofing measures and you can see this information via the link provided. Let me show you how easy it is to create your own step cover flashings like the ones seen here on this porch or here on this Dutch pan tile roof. Here I will be replacing this old cover step flashing to a small porch roof and because it's nice and small I can keep everything in frame so that it's easier to follow. One of the easiest ways I've found over the years to remove old flashings if you need to is to use a simple hammer and sturdy screwdriver. Normally driving the screwdriver behind the old pointing or lead fixings will bring off the old lead without damaging the face of the brickwork. Sometimes though levering the lead with a claw hammer like this helps things along unless a lead chock wedge is particularly well hammered in. If that is the case and you can get behind it nibble away with a screwdriver until it becomes loose. The lead is now off and the chase is cleaned out and notice that the tile has an upstand element here so when we flash into the lowest part of the tile here it will be waterproof because the groove in the profile effectively creates a gutter for us. Luckily this brickwork is already chased out because I'm replacing the existing flashings but if it wasn't and you just had a plain wall here this is how you would do that. Firstly most roofers will try to use 150mm or 6 inch step flashings and I'm no exception so I'll lightly scratch a line parallel to the roof slope 150mm or thereabouts above the highest part of the roof tiles and here with the aid of Photoshop I've marked that line in so that we can work with it obviously if you live in an exposed location that suffers bad weather you can increase the height of this step flashing if you want to we now need to remove all the mortar between just outside the scratch line here and here on an every single course of bricks that requires the step flushing like this this can be done manually with a hammer and bolster or sometimes with a screwdriver as long as the mortar isn't rock hard or preferably with a diamond tipped mortar rake like this here I have removed the safety guard and dust extraction so you can see the process clearly. This is for the benefit of the video, do not do this yourself and always wear eye protection and a dust mask. Now the mortar is raked out and ready to receive the step flushings, so let's measure it up. We know the height will be 150mm or 6 inches as we measured the upstand for the step flushing earlier. The second measurement is the cover aspect of the flashing which will occur here at the bend and we want to allow enough lead into the lowest point of the tile plus a little bit extra for any cover lost by lead beating later so 150 millimeters takes me to this point here 150 plus 150 is 300 the width of the lead will be 300 millimeters or 12 inches with a fold at the 150 millimeter mark as seen here. Finally we require the length. Personally my advice is to try not to exceed 1.2 meters or 4 feet with any step flashing in one section. This will help to stop premature splitting and fatigue cracks as well as being easier to work with. 
Here though it's one meter, so that's fine. Twin this with the width of 300 millimeters we had earlier and it's time to cut and bend the lead ready for marking. Once the lead is cut to length, simply bend it at the desired point. Nothing more technical than a straight off cut of timber is required to do this. It's now ready to take it back up the roof for marking. Next, taking a level, or as seen here, a straight piece of timber, you're going to mark a waterline at 65mm or thereabouts above the surface of the tiles. You can do this by lightly scratching the surface of the lead with a nail or bolster. Now I'm using a small offcut of timber like this to mark the lead where it will fold over the top edge of the brick by lightly scratching it. And here it is done with Photoshop so you can see it better. Next, set up and mark the angle of your steps. Using the same piece of timber, scratch a line between the water line and the brickwork course. Normally this is done somewhere between an angle of 60 degrees and 45 degrees, but I usually try to match the angle with any similar flashings on the property within this range. Now just mark up the rest of your steps in the same fashion. Finally, we need to mark the depth of the flashings that penetrate into the brickwork chase. Measure above your fold lines that we marked earlier and simply add on the amount of penetration required. In this case, it will be somewhere between 15 to 18 millimeters to match the original chase depth. And again, it's just a matter of scratching the rest in. To save any confusion on the ground later, scratch out any scrap sections of lead that will be cut out and disregarded later, like this. Now using Photoshop, I'll remove the waterline and the waste scratched out lead. Now it's much easier to see what we've just achieved. Now it's just a matter of cut, fold and fitting. And here is the step cover flashing cut into shape. Don't worry about any light scratches, after two or three weeks of weathering they will be completely invisible. All that's left to do is fold it on the chase depth lines we marked earlier and that's done like this. This video is actually from my basic step flashing video, but it's exactly the same technique, just a matter of folding the lead over the edge of this timber like so. Now the lead flashing is slotted into place and I have fixed it with traditional lead chock fixings. And if you don't know how to fit these or point up a mortar chase properly, please check out my other video on how to fit lead flashings via the link in the description bar or at the end of the video. I have also taken the opportunity to trim off any unnecessary lead here to make things not only look a little neater but also to help the lead dress better at the end. Now is the time if you were fitting a longer lead flashing like this that you would repeat the process again. Here the overlap is created by simply overlapping the lead flashings underneath like this. Back on our job I've now gently tapped back the step flashing flush with the face of the brickwork. No special tools are needed for this, you can use the same offcut of timber that we were using earlier. This just stops hammer marks appearing in the face of the lead. The same technique can be used on the mating surfaces with the tiles, but be careful not to break or fracture the tiles underneath while you're doing this. Again, at transitional spots like here, no specialist tools are required if you don't have them. This lead can be bossed into place with the end of a claw hammer, nothing more really is needed. I know the temptation now is to beat the lead over every detail of the tile to make it look fantastic, 
but be careful. The tighter the lead is bossed around the tiles, the more it loses its ability to move with expansion and contraction, and this can cause premature fatigue cracks later on, so be a bit careful. Finally, I fitted the apron flashings above like this, and after pointing and patination oil, this is the end result. Well, you should now know how to create your own step and cover flashings like this, or like this. Well that brings another video to an end, I hope this proves useful in some way and thanks for watching.